Okay, so we have built our snowman. It is time to put some more details to him. Today, this is the YouTube classroom for Autodesk 3D Studio Max 2018. This is video number six. It's quarter one, week one, day two. And our introduction to uh, 3D Studio Max is continuing. Today, our job is to finish up our snowman and render him out. So, or her. You know, whatever. We're good. Uh, so, let's get started. We know we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different objects going on. If you actually hit H, it brings up all the different objects. Now, we've been really naughty and we have not labeled any of our stuff. That's okay for today, but later on it's going to be a huge problem. Today, though, we're going to get, uh, we're just going to use some more primitives and move on from here. So, by now you should be pretty good at rotating around using alt and middle mouse button. You should be pretty good at hitting F for front, L for left, and T for top. You should hit P for perspective, and you should be able to zoom out with the middle mouse wheel. Um, so what we're going to do today is create some more stuff. So when we create things, we got to make sure we're going over here to the create tab and then selecting geometry and then our standard primitives now there's a bunch of other crazy primitives we'll get into later but for today we're going to stick with our standard ones and the first one we're going to use today is a torus a torus is a donut um, which is pretty cool so I want the donut to be around his neck so if I create it in the perspective view that's okay um, but I think it's probably smarter to create it in the top view so I'm going to right click on this before I let go of my left button and that will undo my work and I hit T for the top view and I'm going to create that torus roughly there and now I can adjust the width of the torus before I click to finalize so it's down here I'm going to hit W again so I can move it and I'm going to move it along the X and Y axes and basically I want to line it here if I wanted to I could alt W and make sure I've got it looking properly in each one I like to rearrange things so this should be perspective this should be I don't know, front no I think this is left front top okay cool that's my front Here's my, it doesn't really matter you can do whatever you want. I'm going to rearrange this because I want to make it a little thinner first. So I'm going to grab hit R uh, and then shrink it like that. And then I'm going to hit E and I'm going to rotate it. And I'm going to hit W and I'm going to move it so it's approximately around his neck. All right now, let's see where we're at here. How does that look? We might need to turn the edge faces off. It seems to me like it would be nice if this was a little thinner. And I can't easily adjust the thinness except if I go into the modify tab up here and then adjust the the radius number one and the radius number two. There you go. And we should probably adjust the sides too. Sides of 16 and segments if we want it more or less detailed. Um, well, let's bump it to... Uh, I think it was already 32, so 32 is probably fine. Once again, binary numbers are best. I like those. Um, so now uh, I'm going to maximize this by Alt-W, and we've got this. You can put the next part of this. We'll make sure it's the same sort of idea. We've got like a scarf we're trying to put together here. <clears throat> I'm going to go back to my Create tab, and then... Um, Let's see here. I think I'm going to use a box. And we're going to use a special tool here called Auto Grid. Auto Grid is pretty cool because what it does is it creates your box according to whatever object you're selected. So as I select this section here, it will automatically choose this face as where my box will start. Like that. So Auto Grid creates your box so that it's already sort of adjusted to the angle that it's the of the object it's connected to or that you build it off of i'm going to turn auto grid back off um it's kind of cool i don't use it very often um but like i said it's kind of neat 
Uh, now, one of the reasons I, I actually have you guys do this scarf business is because it's kind of difficult to get the angle just right. Um, and it gives you a chance to sort of play around with this tool uh, and try and get it a little better. And no, actually, I'm going to move this down a little bit because I think his head's sticking through the, there a little bit. Uh, maybe. There. Um, here's a good time to start looking at my position. So we want a local position on this. That way, uh, for both the rotation, we want local and position. Because then it makes it a lot easier to work off of this because everything sort of flows a little better. Cool. It's not super awesome, but it's kind of, it's good enough. Cool. Now, cylinders. We're going to create cylinders for arms. Uh, but first, we should probably make sure that the scarf is the same color. So I'm going to select both of those, grab this, and then change it to red. You can do whatever color you want. You don't even need to make a scarf. It's totally up to you. But we do need to make sticks for hands. Now, I'm not going to go crazy, but I'm going to hit T for... T Actually, I'm going to hit L for left, so I'm in the left view. Because I want this cylinder that I create... Um, I'm going to hit S for snap so I know where it's going to be created and roughly how big it's going to be. Um, so basically, I wanted to create the, sta the, the stick from the left view. So I click and drag and then drag up again for the left view. And you should end up with something like this. So I can hit P again to go back to my perspective view. Now, honestly, that's kind of thick. Um, I'm also going to turn it brown-ish. You see, there's no brown, which is kind of lame. So we need a new brown. So go into custom colors over here on the left side. Add a custom color. Uh, find our brown, which is kind of like a like a dirty orangish, like a darker dirty orange. Uh, that's probably pretty good. And click OK. There. Um, I'm going to adjust from the front view. Now that I've got a stick to work with, I'm going to adjust the radius to make it skinnier and the length to make it a little longer. Now, before, we already set our modification uh, reference coordinate systems to local for both moving objects. So from the front view, uh, I'm going to turn S. Whoops, I grabbed the wrong thing. S for snapping. Left view. I'm just going to build one of these arms like this from the front. Cool. Now, um, and positionally, if I hit E, I'll rotate it like that. So it already rotates kind of in a good spot. I didn't end up doing it, but now I hit Shift and drag out another stick and click OK. It's going to be big, but I'm going to rescale it along its length, and I'm going to rescale the whole thing a little bit. And I'm going to rotate it a little bit and move it out here so it's coming off of the original the original arm there maybe even rotate it back a little bit see that because it's sticking inside of it you can see that it looks like it kind of just grows out I mean it's not great but it's okay if you hold shift and rotate something it does the same thing which is pretty cool so because I created two of them like that it kind of already works I'm going to move that back a little bit just so it doesn't look quite so uh, perfect. Hold shift and do one more. Click OK. Rotate that around. It doesn't, this doesn't really matter. You're basically trying to make twigs. So um, there you go. Now, to make all this work better, like if I want to move this around, I can select this and select all of these and I can sort of rotate them and it, the things get weird because they're on local what would be better is if I could just move one piece and all the others move with it and that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna select each one of these edge pieces and I can hold control and select all three of these little fingers and then I'm gonna go up here to this select and link so I've selected those pieces and I'm going to link them to the main post by clicking select and link I've already selected them, so now I gotta do is select the the blue things that I've highlighted, which are just fingers, 
and I can click, left click and drag and notice the little dotted line comes off of this. I'm going to select the actual arm. Now when I let go, it sort of flashes. I'm going to hit Q, select the arm, hit W, or I'm sorry, E, and now when I rotate it, they move together. Okay, now that, that can kind of be frustrating, um, or at least confusing. Um, so if you have trouble with that, just go ahead and go back and look at it again and see what's going on. Um, but I'm going to have him so his arm is sticking up. Oops, make sure you grab the right thing. Uh, like that. And then I'm going to grab all four of those. Hold shift and drag them over here. Click OK. I don't know if these are going to be linked. They are. That's great. So I'm going to move it that way and rotate that roughly 180 degrees on its Z axis. If I hit A for angle snap, it will be a little way easier to grab or to make it perfect. But it is a snowman, so perfection isn't really a big deal. I'm going to put this arm down. So he's like saying, hello. Because that's what good snowmen say. They say, hello. How are you doing? And then they kill you. Because that's what, duh. I mean, that's how the movies go. Snowmen are nice. They're like ice golems. Anyway, so we've adjusted that. And now he's saying hi. And we're good to go. So now what we need to do is get ready to render him. So rendering is a whole extensive process that we're not going to really get in too much. But I do want to make sure you have something to print uh, and show off uh, your newly experienced uh, in 3D. So we're going to hit P for perspective view. And we're going to use the middle mouse wheel and sort of just position our little snowman so he's saying hi or she or whatever scene you've got. You want to make sure everything fits inside the render. And the way we do that is by holding Shift F. Now currently our render setup is square. And that's not ideal. If we come up here, we've got a little teapot with a gear on it. So let's go ahead and uh, select that. And then there's a whole bunch of different options. But the only one we're really going to mess with today is we're going to output size we're going to change this to hd tv video so we're going to click that so you'll notice the size of the image changes um it's really important to hold shift and f that way you know what's going to render so anything outside of this scene is not going to be rendered properly and you can use uh, the middle mouse wheel to zoom out and sort of set that up um, if you want to get it perfect, you want to frame it so that it takes up a lot of space. Like we got a lot of dead space here and here. If you select this zoom button, you can click on that and then zoom in a little bit like that. Maybe too much. So it's taking up just the right amount of space. Perfect. And now to render, we come up here and we actually um, hit F9 which automatically renders our scene. Now to save it, hit save image, and then we are gonna save this as a PNG. PNGs are great because they include transparency, which will be really good and really important later. Uh, file names in this class is always period, last name, file name. So period, let's say you're in period eight, which isn't a reason, which isn't a period, but eight underscore last name, whatever your last name is. Don't turn something in that has a last name. Uh, it's your last name. And then the file. So this would be Snowman. Okay. And then hit Save. And then make sure that under PNG configuration, you use the 24-bit. Now, I've already saved it, so I'm not going to save it again. But you're going to hit Save. And then you will have that file for me to print out so you can take it home and show... Uh, show your family that uh, you've got some really sweet 3D modeling skills that you're building up. So if you're done and you've got tons of time left, you can uh, do a lot more stuff here. You can create like a plane uh, so that your snowman is on like a snowy plane and maybe use a cylinder or something and make like some 
some trees or something in the in the cylinder hit p for perspective uh, i can probably turn shift f off so i can see better and then i could make a cone and i could make trees from the front view see this is like a look at that pine tree instant pine tree anyway you can do whatever you want um you can put a snowman in the city he could, uh, he could be melting or stabbing people like we talked about earlier um because they are terrible scary things they're they're like golems um anyway so yeah you can do all sorts of stuff if you've got extra time if you're just if you're trying to get this done just save it and turn it in your extensions are up to you you could put more detail in in the outfit you could make snow horns or snow ripped muscles uh whatever you feel like you can do all right and that's basically it next time we're going to move to the other side of the hemisphere and we're going to be working on a beach scene and talk about aec primitives and a whole bunch of other cool stuff so thanks for watching i hope you got a lot out of it today and uh, I hope you have a cool scene. And I will see you next time.